somehow had built something where they could hide the child, and that's ended up being what the case was. They had the ability to hide the child and the mother in this location. Um, I provided some photos of what we found last evening. You know, so I think they even last night, knowing that we had the search warrant and we entered the residence, the father, uh, Schultes Jr., Kirk Schultes Jr., and the grandfather, Kirk Schultes Sr., they were adamant with our officers that the child was not there, that Kimberly was not there, that we weren't going to find anything. Um, and that's so which led me to believe after the fact that they had done this so many times and gotten away with it, they just figured that we would give up after a while and leave. Um, however, every officer that was involved there last evening, the state troopers and our uniformed officers, uh, nobody was leaving without that child. They, we honestly believe that that child was there. And, of course, at the end of the day, that's exactly what the case was. The child was hidden in that residence. So, actually, Detective Eric Thiel, one of my detectives, uh, was walked up and down those steps a number of times uh, during this, the course of the search. And he said there was just something about the steps that was off. It didn't feel right. It didn't look right. He took a closer examination of it. It struck him funny that um, these stairs that come off a set of built gold doors at the back side of the residence that go into the basement, um, they were encased. They were closed in. And uh, normally those type stairs are either made of concrete or if they're made of wood, there's no risers. And you can see behind the staircase. In this case, you couldn't. And it was built pretty solid. Uh, he used a flashlight, and where two of the step boards came together, uh, he looked through the crack, and he saw what he believed was a blanket. So they used a halogen tool to start removing the stair steps uh, from the staircase itself. And then eventually they saw a pair of little feet. And when they got more boards off, they found the, the little girl Paisley and her biological mother Kimberly uh, Cooper hiding in that location. Uh, she was in good shape. She was, uh, you know, she, I, it was concerning for our officers because, again, you know, we went in there not knowing what we were going to encounter. So some of our officers were, were heavily armed. Um, you know, I'm concerned about how that may have affected her to see the police there. I'm concerned about why our officers could walk up and down the stairs so many times and the child not make a sound, the mother not say anything. So I'm kind of concerned about what kind of information was conveyed to that little girl about the police. You know, we're supposed to be, if you, you know, we tell our children, if you get lost, go find a policeman, right? And the policemen are there to help you. And, and in this particular case, I'm sure that that's not what the child was told. I'm sure it was quite differently, and that's probably why the child remained so still and so quiet. And probably, I would say, between three and a half to four hours. You know, I can tell you that uh, on the way back here uh, from the residence, we, we brought the little girl back here to be seen by paramedics. And um, when we... Our detectives were driving past uh, McDonald's on 212. She got all excited, and she said, is that a McDonald's? And the detective said, yes, it is. And she said, I, I remember I, I liked McDonald's food. I haven't had it in so long. The detective just turned right around and went right back to McDonald's and went through the drive-thru and pick, picked up Paisley a mail and brought her back to headquarters. Yeah.